All right, good evening, everyone. Light, uh, light show today. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? <laughs> God only knows. As you guys know, I'm Chaplain John Butler. I'm with Battleline Ministries. And ministry that I do with Battleline is we go around to reenactments and I give God's Word services on Sunday and just to be there for the soldiers and the ladies who the people who uh, need to need to talk it's a real thing for me it's not just something that I play it's not a, a, a portray it is a portrayal but it's I don't play chaplain I portray a chaplain from that war but I also do actual chaplain work which is very fulfilling and stuff. I just actually had a text this mo or this afternoon that I performed the funeral services of one of my friend's wife, and her sister said, hey, my dad passed away, but you touched him so much. He was so impressed with you. Can you come do his service? So I think I'm going to be away that time, so i got to really pray about it and think about that. But, you know, it's really, really touching when someone comes to you and says, hey, can you do this, you know? And uh, I think, you know, we're not supposed to, as, as Scripture says, don't let the right hand know what the left hand's doing or vice versa, whatever. But it's nice to get, uh, hey, that was really good, you know. But we're supposed to do things for the Lord. We're not supposed to worry about things, especially things that we have no control over. And that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight, is being anxious. Anxious for nothing. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have given to us. The opportunities that you have placed before us. Lord, we look to you to please you, to serve you, Lord. And in serving you, we mean to spread your word so that others can hear about your grace, your mercy, your son who gave his life and then rose again to sanctify us. Watch over us now. And as your word, your scripture tells us, let us be weary for not what to say, but that you would give us the words as we need it. We look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're living in a time where <clears throat> it's easy to worry. It's easy to lose hope. I mean, you take a look at the situations going around. You know, you get COVID, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. You know, we've been two years messing with that. You know, it's like looking at the bleakness. You know, you, you can look at the news and you see... 20,000 people a day affected, and I kind of doubt some of those figures, but I'm not one that I have the actual research in front of me to do that, but it's kind of weird that you would say 20,000 people a day. I mean, the whole state of Florida would be in, infected then in a matter of months. It just seems to me that way, but still, it is a terrible thing going on. I am not here to say it's not but it's like oh what if I get it I'm gonna die okay what if you don't get it and you get hit right by a bus you're gonna die anyway oh maybe I should get the vaccine that'll protect me oh but then I got the vaccine what if I get this new Delta variant what if what if? I, made, I did a sermon one time about the what if. Two little letters make up a small little word that basically will control your life if you let it. How many people have uh, heard the new Paw Patrol movie? Uh, it's a TV series on Nickelodeon. It's called Paw Patrol. It's about little dogs and rescue team and stuff it's a cute little show i like it i like watching kids shows like that well they made a movie about it and in the movie the lead dog his name's chase he gets uh he's trying to rescue these people and he forgets to do something and he ends up in trouble 
and his writer's checking him out. He says, you look okay. And he's like, I can't believe I did that, you know. It's, it's Rescue 101, and I shouldn't have forgot to do that. And the writer's trying to tell him, saying, hey, it's okay. We work as a team. Everything turned out. Well, what if it didn't and something happened to those people? What if? What if? Two little letters that can control your life if you let it. There's no hope, anyone says. What if? Well, I'll tell you what. In Psalms 55, starting in verse 1, it says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and, I, and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. Horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, then I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Salah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Give ear, O Lord. Listen to me, please. Hear my cry. Because I make a noise and mourn in my complaint. Listen to my supplications, my prayers, my requests, my humble begging. Listen to me, God, please. Oh, my enemies are all around me. Death has fallen upon me. In their wrath, they hate me. You ever worry about people hating you? I did all the time when I was growing up. I didn't want people to hate me. I wanted people to like me. Didn't turn out that way, but hey, whatever. God has his ways. Because I'm surrounded in my enemies, evil, wickedness, immorality, oppression, everything that we're seeing in society today. We're seeing oppression of all kinds, of all colors. Sorry, it's not just the blacks that are being it. You know, it's, it's everything. It's everybody. But you have anxiousness. You have anxiety. You have concerns. It's not bad to have concerns, but don't let them control you. Worry. We all do it. Lord knows I, I do it, and I still do it. I can't help it. But God tells us not to worry. But as I said, you still do it. Like a spoiled little brat, little child that doesn't want to do anything. How many times, you, as parents, if you had children, how many times you had to tell them clean up their room? Can't catch you how many times mom had to tell me before she got the stick. <laughs> yeah. But how many times does God have to tell us something? How many times does God have to tell us, don't worry, I'm in control? Continuing in Psalm 55, it says in verse 16, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abide of old, Salah. Because they have no changes, Therefore, they fear not God. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him, and he, had, he hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. 
Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. It's hard to be a Christian today. Even though we know it says it in the Bible that this is going to happen, we put our trust in the Lord. We put our faith in God. We let Him into our heart. We try to live by His commandments and His covenant. And then we turn around and we see the lawless and the wicked who deny God and they're prospering. They're having a great time. They're making a lot of money. But have you seen inside their hearts, their minds, the worry that they consume each day? A rich man was asked once, how much money is enough? And he said, a little bit more. What, you got 50, you're worth $50 million. That's not enough. He says, no, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And then he goes into this mansion and locks himself behind a gate. Puts in alarm systems like you wouldn't believe it. So somebody could break into to this house. And they couldn't get past 10 feet past the, the wall before alarms start going off. And lights and <laughs> cops are coming around. Why? Because he's worried sick. He's worried somebody's going to take what he has, his material possessions. Christian, we have something that nobody can take. And that's the love of God in our hearts. Worry is our sinful nature. But every door has a key. Everything has a key that unlocks it. What's the key to end worry? What's the key to ending being anxious? That's trust. Trust is the key. But what do you trust in? Government? Do you trust in government? Just ask the American Indian. Yeah, he can trust the government. It was said in one movie that, uh, I think it was a John Wayne movie, Fort Apache. He says, yeah, he says, uh, a politicians in Washington will make a soldier's promise a lie. Psalms 146.3 says, do not put your trust in princes, nor in son of man, in whom there is no help. Yes, he tells us, to submit ourselves to the authorities that are placed above us. But only as long as those authorities are going with God, not from God. He tells us not to trust man in Micah. Micah. Verse 7, or chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. You know, that's strong words to say, John. I, got, I get friends and stuff. I can't trust them to an extent. But just remember, while we're down here, we're still sinful man. We can tell you and we can even act like we're going to help you and stuff. But I'm not saying all the time. Lord knows that I want to try to be just like Jesus and just like God. That I want to be straightforward and be able to help when I can. And that you can trust in me. But it says, trust not in a friend. Put, you, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonors the father. The daughter rise up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Man's enemies are the men of his own house. Wow, some heavy words. So who shall we trust? If we can't trust even our closest friends, who can we trust? God. Jesus. 
the one who gave up his glory, gave up his perfectness to become our wickedness. Had a discussion with a friend. He was telling me how uh, I said something about Moses was the last person to really see God. Not actually his face, but he talked to God in his presence in a cloud on Mount Sinai, in a fire burning bush on that mountain. He talked to God physically. All the others on down, Joshua, Elijah, talked to God in their hearts. Heard him in a wind, whisper of a wind, in their thoughts. But then he thought he tried to throw me a, a curb and he says, well, Jesus was God, huh? And yeah, but you just said nobody ever saw God's face. Okay, that's right. God the Spirit. Jesus came down leaving his holiness, his grace, not his grace, but his glory in heaven. Because if he had his glory, if he was even a bit of the Spirit of God in him while he was here, he couldn't be here. Why? We're full of sin. God can't be in the presence of sin. He said that he couldn't imagine God's um, uh, emotions that when he, to send his son down here to die, you know, as a father, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd say, here, take me. And I'm like, well, that's what he did. He sent himself as his son. You know, he kind of lost track there, but God sent himself in the form of Jesus as a man. And Jesus, even Jesus was scared there at the end. He was so scared, he was sweating drops of blood from his forehead. But he had the trust of the Father. He tells us not to worry. In Philippians. In chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Love that song. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. That's my own words. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Don't worry. And I ain't going to finish that be happy thing. Don't worry. Matthew 6.31 Do not worry, saying, What we shall eat, or what we shall drink, what she will... What we shall wear. Do not worry, fear not, and other derivatives of that are mentioned in the Bible over 365 times. Do not worry, fear not. Do not concern yourself. What was that? Be careful for nothing. In Matthew 6, 34, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient is enough, for the day is its own trouble. It says in the scripture also, how many of you can add a cubic to your stature by concern or worry? Luke 12, 22 says before, like in, in uh, Ma uh, Mark, Matthew, Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life, what to eat, nor about the body, what you put on. Do not worry about talking to people about God, about Jesus. 
but they may reject me. They may ridicule me. They're not ridiculing you. They're ridiculing Jesus. Jesus himself sent his disciples out two by two and basically told them, don't worry. Do not take any extra clothes. Do not take a coat. Do not take a stick. Don't take anything. But just go. And when you knock on a door and they receive you in, stay there whether as long as it, the Spirit tells you. Voicing in the Lord with them. But if they reject you and turn you away, wipe the dust of the road off of the carpet off your feet and move on. Don't worry about rejection. That was my problem. I was always worried about rejection. I always wanted to be the guy people liked. But it didn't turn out that way, as I said. Luke 12, 11. Mark 13, 11. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 all say the same thing. Do not worry about what to say. If you're in a trap, you're caught. Or if someone comes to you and asking questions. Do not worry what to say. That's one of my biggest problems. Is A friend of mine will call me and say, hey, John, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, great. He wants to talk about something. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Do not worry. God will give it to you. Reading the mission report in front of my church every Sunday morning. Used to read it first and, and think of what I could say, witty little comments that I could say, and every time I tried that, I'd fall flat on my face. It turned out to be a rambling mess. But if I just read it and let God give me the words, then people get it. They understand. Do not worry. I will give you the answers when you need them. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Heaviness is the heart of man. It makes it stoop. But a good word makes it glad. So many scriptures are in the Bible, in God's Word, telling us not to worry. Best one, 1 Timothy 1, chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He has it in control. You read in the scripture, fear God, the fear of God. Fear of God. No, what it's saying is be in awe. If you're fearing anything, you're fearing the consequences of disobeying what He's having you to do or to say. That's the fear that you should have. People used to say, well, if you spank your children, that's just going to have them grow up to fear you. Oh, I got spanked plenty of times by my dad. I never feared him. He was my best friend. I feared what would happen to me if I, he ever found out I did wrong. When Samson, y'all know Samson in the scripture, strong man. When he came to Lehi, he let them tie him up. He didn't just come in and he just slapped the cuffs on him. Like, oh, wow, what's going on here? What's going on here? What am I under? No, he said, okay, come on, tie me up. Tie me up. Stand right here. You can tie me up. He wasn't worried at all. Was he trusting in his strength? He wasn't scared. Because maybe he knew that he could use his strength to break out of those bonds. He knew his strength came from God, not his hair. The reason why he never cut his hair is because he was a, a Nazarene. And he was under a gius from God. He was under a promise with God that no razor should ever touch his head. He knew and trusted that God was in control and that God would deliver him out of that situation. How? By using his massive strength to break the bonds? No, he didn't even have to struggle. God made the bonds as flax 
burned by fire, and they basically fell off. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have been using them a lot lately. Did they worry about uh, get coming up to the front and, and not bowing down at the idol when they heard the, the music and stuff? I don't bow to no one but God. We're going to burn you. Do what you have to do. Trust in the Lord. In Isaiah. Chapter 26. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open your gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, for in Jesus Christ is everlasting life. Jeremiah. Seventeen verse seven. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. All the, through this time now and times, it's like hopeless this. Hopeless. There's no hope. There's always hope with Jesus Christ. In Revelations, it says, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Got to get my fingers to work right. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, he that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. In chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Turn away. 180 degrees. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. I will sup with him, and he is me. To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. How many more times is God going to have to say it? How many more times is God going to have to prove it? Trust in Him. He is in control. Have faith in Him. And all you have to do, for those I know you here have been saved, have accepted Jesus, but for those out there that have not and want to, it is simple. Just a simple prayer. Yes, Satan makes it where, oh, a simple prayer. You think a few words is going to save you from all that you've done? You've done way too many bad things. Just remember, when someone tries to bring up your past as crimes against you, tell them that God had dropped all the charges. Because Jesus Christ is my lawyer. And he paid my fine. All you have to do is say, Father God, I believe that I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. 
I believe that you raised him from the dead. Please come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And remember that Jesus says in John chapter 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And being born again, as Nicodemus asked, shall I rejoin, re-enter my mother's womb? No. Your first birth out of your mother was birth of water, birth of flesh. This is your spiritual birth. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. And if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We all have an eternity after this life. Yes, we do. Every single one of us has an eternity. But as it says in, uh, in real estate, it's location, location, location. Where are you going to spend your eternity? Are you going to spend it in the pits of hell? Separated forever from God the Father, the one who loves you? Or are you going to spend it with Him? The choice is yours. God's not sending anybody to hell. We send ourselves. Because we don't trust in the one living God. We try to trust everything else, even in ourselves, government, other men, sons of men. God is the only way. Trust in Him. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for this message. We thank You for those that have attended tonight, here and online. And Father, we ask that you come into each and every one. For those that are in line, if they said the sinner's prayer for the first time, I ask them to call Son of Coast Haven of Rest. Get further discipleship. Learn what it means to be a Christian. Learn what it means to fully accept Jesus and to trust in him. We ask that you bless the food to, that we're partaking to nourish our bodies as you nourish our souls. Lord, continue to watch over us and let us go forth and spread your word. In Jesus' name, amen.